Good evening, good afternoon, good morning, wherever you are. This is Ruel Barksdale, your host for Walking Through the Book of Genesis. Tonight we are on chapter 25, so please, please, ma'am, please, sir, get your Bible, get your iPad, get your phone, uh, get some paper, get some pencil, get a pen. Uh, hit share, hit like. Uh, you can visit this on YouTube, on Veeds, on uh, Facebook, on Instagram, uh, not on Instagram, on um, so many different venues. So wherever you are, whatever you're doing, walk through the book of Genesis with us. There's so much. Now, listen, I don't own the rights to this music, but I want you to know that God will speak to your heart. Holy Spirit, give me the words that will bring me life. And as we walk through the book of Genesis, I believe that the words in the book of Genesis will bring us all life. And so here we go. Chapter 25. Speak to us, Lord. Okay, well, we will visit, revisit that song on the outtake. Now listen, now listen. I, when, we, when we look at the book of Genesis... Right now, we're in the part of the book that talks about the, the life of Abraham. And he's about to go off the scene. Uh, we've seen him from when God told him to leave his family, his fame, and his fortune to a land that I would show you. And Abraham, by faith, leaves everything that he knows to go toward a land that he doesn't know. Why? Because God told him to. And he believed what God told him. And there are bumps and bruises along the road. There are ups and downs. Every day isn't perfect, but God was with him every day, every step of the way. And there's so much that we can learn from this. God gives you a vision. God gives you an idea of what he wants to do in your life. And, and, and there are going to be bumps and bruises and there are going to be ups and downs. And you're going to make mistakes and God's still going to be with you. But somebody said if the mountain was smooth, you wouldn't be able to climb it. And certainly Abraham's mountain is not smooth. Sometimes because of mistakes that he made. And because some, sometimes it's just because of the will of God. I want to take you back before we go on in chapter 5 to 25 into chapter 21. Uh, because there's something there that I don't want us to miss when we get to chapter 25 uh, in chapter 21, after decades of a promise, Sarah and, and Abraham have a child, and his name is Isaac. But they have this child after they had tried to take matters into their own hand. I told you sometimes the road was bumpy, and sometimes we do this. God promises something. We get tired of waiting, and, and then maybe we start second-guessing. Well, maybe God wants me to do this. Maybe God wants me to do that. And so they say, look, Hagar. There, there, there's a promise, so why don't you go lay down with Abraham? And she does, and she bears a son, and his name is Ishmael. Ishmael would later become the father of the Arab nation. Isaac would become the father of the Jewish nation. And there's grief between those two even today. But in, the cha in chapter 25, this is what I wanted to share with you. Chapter 25, we're going to see them come together. But let's see where the problem starts. Uh, let's start with verse 6 of uh, chapter 21. Sarah said, God has brought me laughter. And everyone who hears about this will laugh with me. And she added, who would have said to Abraham that Sarah would nurse children? Yet I have borne him a son in his old age. The child grew and was weaned, and on the day Isaac was weaned, Abraham held a great feast. But Sarah saw the son that whom Hagar the Egyptian had borne to Abraham was mocking. And she said to Abraham, Get rid of that slave woman and her son, for that slave woman's son will never share in the inheritance with my son Abraham, with my son Isaac. And so you have animosity from the get-go. Now this time... Uh, Isaac's only probably three to four years old, so he wasn't he wasn't the cause of this. But Ishmael, who had been the only son for maybe 10, 15 years, looks and says, well, who is this young fella? And why are they making such a great fuss over him? And so there's animosity between the two. I want you to remember that. All right, so let's go to chapter 25 and get started here. Chapter 25. 
uh, verse one. Now, ch in chapter 25, we're going to see a bunch of names. We're going to see uh, the genealogy of Abraham. We're going to see the genealogy of um, Isaac. We're going to see the genealogy of uh, Ishmael. We're going to see genealogy here. So when we see that, um, I want you to understand that God's blessings are on all of Abraham's children. Now, Isaac was the, the one that was um, going to receive the majority of the blessing because the promise would come through him. But when Abraham had a child, no matter how that child was conceived, he gave, he gave that child, he protected that child uh, to a degree. He, he furnished, um, he pro provided provisions for that child. All right, so let's, let's get to it. Uh, Abraham took another wife. Now, Sarah has died. And Abraham is probably maybe one over 120, 120, 130 years old. Um, some say up to 140 some years old. But Abraham took another wife, not a concubine. Now, some would suggest that she was the head of the maidservants, but the, the Bible uses the word wife here. Abraham took another wife whose name was Keturah. She bore him Zimran, Joxan, Medan, Median, Ishbak, and Zua. Joxan, the descendants of Dedan, were the uh, Asherites and the Lechuites and the Le Lemuites, Lemuites. The sons of Midian were Ephah, Ephah, Hanak, Abida, and Eldaah. All these were descendants of Keturah. Now, so see, let's let's break that down for a second. Abraham. Now, we don't know how many daughters he had. The Bible doesn't tell us that, but we understand that he had eight sons. He had six sons from Keturah. Now, he had these sons after after Sarah had died. Six sons he had. So he had to be well into his hundreds. After Sarah had died, he had six sons. He only had one son with Sarah. And that was Isaac. He had one son with Ishmael, with Hagar. And that was Ishmael. He had six sons with Keturah. They were Zimran, Joksan, Medan, Midian, the father of the Midianites, Ishbak, as Shua. What, what, what do we learn from that? That God said that he was going to bless Abraham's seed. And that seed was blessed whether it was out of Sarah, Hagar, or Keturah. But only one would carry the birthright that would ultimately bring us Christ. Only one would be the fa become the father of the Jewish nation, but Abraham didn't. Abraham didn't ignore, didn't set aside the other sons as if they didn't exist. Abraham, uh, chapter twenty-five, verse five. Abraham left everything he owned to Isaac, but. While he was still living, he gave gifts to the sons of his concubines and sent them away from his son Isaac to the land of the east. I'm going to bless you, but I don't want you, I don't want you contending with, I don't want you competing with, I don't want you contriving against Isaac. Isaac is the son of promise. Although Abraham, altogether Abraham lived 175 years. Then Abraham breathed his last and died at a good old age, an old man and full of years. And here, here's what I want you to see. This is why we took you to, verse, to chapter 21. He died of old age, at a good old age, an old man and full of years. And he was gathered to his people. His sons, not eight of them, two of them. Which two? His sons, Isaac and Ishmael, buried him in the cave of Machpelah. 
near Mamre, in the field of Ephron, his son, the son of Zohar, the Hittite, the field of the field Abraham had bought from the Hittites. There Abraham was buried with his wife Sarah. After Abraham's death, God blessed his son Isaac, who then lived near Beer Lahai Roy. Roy. After the death, now it, it didn't say that God did not walk with others, but specifically God walked with God blessed Isaac. The beautiful thing in that passage I just read is that after everything, Isaac and Ishmael come together to bury their father. So let's look at Ishmael's sons, because God's still blessing him. He's not, the, he's not the son of promise, but he's got blessings. Why? Because he's Abraham's son. And you, you need to understand that sometimes you're blessed by connection. You're blessed by who you're connected with. Ishmael was blessed and, and Isaac was blessed because of who he was connected with. As a matter of fact, if you, if you really want to get to the, to the heart of the story, Abraham was blessed. Not because of anything he did, but because of whom he was connected with. This is the account of Abraham's son Ishmael, whom Sarah's maidservant Hagar the Egyptian bore to Abraham. These are the names of the sons of Ishmael, listed in order of their birth. Nebaioth, the firstborn of Ishmael, Kadar, Abil, Misham, Mishma, Duma, Masa, Hadad, Tima, Zator, Nefish, and Kadima. These were the sons of Ishmael, and these are the names of the twelve tribal rulers according to their settlements and camps. They would, they would encamp east of what would become the promised land. Altogether, Ishmael lived 137 years. He breathed his last and died, and he was gathered to his people. His descendants settled in the area of Havilah to Shur, near the border of Egypt, as you go toward Ashur, and they lived in hostility toward all their brothers. Why? Born out of the will of God, but still blessed because he was connected to Abraham. Now this is the account of Abraham's son Isaac. Isaac and Rebekah know of the promise of Abraham, know what God had promised him, know that there was going to be uh, there, there should be some fruitfulness. Uh, no, they, they, they know, they remember the promise. So this is the account of Abraham's son, Isaac. <laughs> Abraham became the father of Isaac. And Isaac was 40 years old when he married Rebekah, daughter of Bethuel, the Arme Armenian, Ar Ar Armenian from Padan Aram, the, the sister of Laban, Laban the Ar Armean, the Ar oh, I can't say that word today for some reason. Aramean, Isaac prayed to the Lord on behalf of his wife. It had been some 20 years. She hadn't had a child, and they keep waiting. They're waiting, and, and, and she, she perhaps remembers the story of Sarah. She says, oh, my God, am I going to wait for decades? Isaac prayed to the Lord on behalf of his wife because she was barren. The Lord answered his prayer, and his wife, Rebekah, became pregnant. Let me read that again. Isaac prayed to the Lord on behalf of his wife. Are you praying for your partners? Are you praying for your spouses? Are you praying for those that you are connected with? Or are you just praying for you? Are you interceding for those in your circle? One of the most powerful things you can do in the life of the, of the Christian is to pray for others, to intercede for others, to see the hurt, the pain, and the need of others, to get down on your sanctified knees and pray for somebody else. Isaac prayed to the Lord on behalf of his wife. Because she was barren, the Lord answered his prayer, and his wife Rebekah became pregnant. The babies, the babies jostled each other within her, and she, they were fighting with each other. They, they were wrestling with each other in the womb, so much so that she's, Lord, what is wrong? What's going on? This, this, I know this can't be normal. First of all, she doesn't know she has twins. All she sees, feels is the uh, discomfort 
the, 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 the wrestling, the jostling in, inside of her womb. Rebecca became pregnant. The babies jostled each other within her. her and, and, and she said, well, why, why is this happening to me? So she went to inquire of the Lord. That's a beautiful, that'll, that'll preach right there. When something is going on and you don't understand it, but you know, it, where, where do you go? Do you go to your friends for, for counsel? Do you, do you go to others who are wrestling with issues of their own for counsel? Where do you go? Rebecca goes to the Lord. The Lord said to her, two nations are in your womb and two peoples from within you will be separated. One people will be stronger than the other and the older will serve the younger. When the time came for her to give birth, there were two, twi two twin boys in her womb. The first to come out was red and his whole body was like a hairy garment. So they named him Esau. After this, his brother came out with his hand grasping Esau's heel. So he was named Jacob. The name Jacob is also um, meant to be deceiver. Isaac was 60 years old when Rebecca gave birth to them. The boys grew up and Esau became a skillful, hunt, skillful, skillful hunter, a man of the open country, while Jacob was a quiet man staying among the tents. One was out hunting, doing manly things. That was Esau. Jacob was hanging around the house. He was learning how to cook, maybe too domesticated for, for Isaac's taste. And so Isaac loves Esau the most. Rebecca, she loves Jacob the most. It's a dangerous thing when we show favoritism to our children. It's a dangerous thing when, when somebody can rightfully say, Mom loves you best, or Dad loves you best. Uh, someone, I was in a conversation with somebody just the other day, and we were lamenting um, the, the plight of our young people today. And my thought was this, we would have better children if we had better parents. And I often wonder what is happening in the houses that lead 13, 14, and 15 year olds to go out and steal cars and, and to commit violent acts and to shoot people. We would have better children if we had better parents. And we find even in this scripture, Isaac and Rebecca, they got issues. They're showing favoritism to their children, and that's, that's going to catch up with them later. We'll see that in, in following chapters. But the boys grew up, and Esau became a skillful hunt, hunter, a man of the open country, while Jacob was a quiet man. It, it, uh, there's nothing wrong with being quiet. Let, let, let's make that clear. It, it didn't say that there was anything wrong with him. It, the, the, if one is extroverted and, and one is introverted, does that make one better than the other one? No. If you have more than one child, I bet you they're different. And sometimes we have favorites because the, the one that is most like us becomes our favorite. Stop that. The, these two were different and, and they both had value. And, and Isaac saw the value in Esau and Rebecca saw the value in Jacob. The boys grew up and Esau became a skillful hunter, a man of the open country, while Jacob was a quiet man staying among the tents. Isaac, who had a taste for wild game, loved Esau, but Rebecca loved Jacob. Once when I, Jacob was cooking some stew, Esau came in from the, the open country famished. Now, back, background, backdrop, the oldest child usually gets the birthright. Usually, because Ishmael didn't get the same thing that Isaac got. But it was customary for the oldest child to get the birthright. Once Jacob was cooking some stew, Esau came in from the open country famished. He said to Jacob, quick, let me, let me have some of that, that, that red stew. I, I'm famished. That is why he also, was also called Edom. Jacob replied, first, sell me your birthright, twin. Sell me your birthright. 
Look, I, I, I'm about to die, Esau said. What good is the birthright to me? First of all, he wasn't about to die. These two were wealthy. He'd been working in the field all day. He was probably hungry. He wasn't about to die. Will you do something permanently foolish for temporary gain? Will you do something permanently damaging because of your temporary appetite? Hmm. No matter what that appetite is, you want it, you see it, you want it now. But that will you go beyond and above and, and subterfuge God's plan for what is temporary? Look, I'm about to die, Esau said. What good is the birthright to me? Do you understand how wealthy Isaac was? In, in today's terms, he would have to be a billionaire. And Isaac ha had wealth that he was prepared to, by right, but he loved him anyway, give to Esau. And Esau is willing to give up his birthright? For a bowl of stew. What are you giving up? For what? Look I'm about to die Esau said. What good is the birthright to me? But Jacob said swear to me first. So he swore an oath to him. Selling his birthright to Jacob. Then Jacob gave Esau some bread and some lentil stew. He ate and drank. Then he got up and left. My God. So Esau, I think this particular scripture right here puzzles me the most. So Esau despised his birthright. Esau literally despised what God had set aside for him. So Esau despised his birthright. Who next, next week, we're going to look at Isaac and Abimelech. Now remember we had said before that Abimelech is not a name but a title. And then uh, in verse 27, we're going to look at Isaac um, giving Jacob through trickery Esau's birthright. So Jacob is the trickster. He's the deceiver. And nobody in, the, in this chapter between Isaac and, and um, Jacob and, and Esau and Rebekah really look good. Jacob uh, looks bad because he's a deceiver. Esau looks bad because he doesn't honor his birthright. Isaac looks bad because, well, you know, he favors Esau. Rebecca looks bad because she favors Jacob. And yet through the foolishness of men and women, God's will will still be done. Listen, the book of Genesis is a powerful book. Stay with us as we walk through the book of Genesis. Next week, we'll be on chapter 26. I love you. God loves you more. Tell a friend, tell an enemy about our walk through the book of Genesis. And perhaps, just perhaps, by the time the next week is over, you and your enemy will be friends. Bye-bye.